What's the good word, Josh? Your boy DKB here. We're diving into our New York Jets 2024 undrafted free agent class. And today, we are covering safety Al Blaze Jr. out of Duke, formerly out of Miami. And I'm loving diving into all of these UDFAs because there wasn't enough for them to get drafted, obviously. But I look at some of these traits and I try to think about after listening to a ton of, uh, you know, experts and guys that have practiced this a lot longer to me, how those can be developed and projected. Um, so hopefully, you know, you guys are picking up on a lot of this and finding out who you essentially like as some of these guys that may uh, eventually find their way onto the 53-man roster. But without further ado... Coming in at six foot one and 195 pounds, we have the 25 year old uh, Mr. Blades here, right? And for one, love the name. I'm not one of the guys that are super high on, uh, you know, necessarily having to find guys that have those unique names. Not saying the NFL is looking for those guys, but I do appreciate some of the ones that are coming in uh, when they're getting drafted, right? I think you had a linebacker or a safety named Diablo uh, and another one named Smoke or Smokey in the last uh, year or two. So stuff like that is cool. But I say that because if you're a fan of namesakes or bloodlines, Al Blades has it in spades, right? You talk about 49ers cornerback Ray Al Blades. That is his father. He's nephew to Benny Blades and Brian Blades. And then he's a cousin to linebacker H.B. Blades. So a lot of love from the NFL just coming in and knowing what he's connected to. He was able to go to Miami, spent five years there, was able to amass a wealth of experience, two-time special teams captain just coming in as a freshman before developing further right and Miami decided to use him not only just as a safety but also as a cornerback splitting time at both and he did so well being able to play this role 2019 being his best year um, although they used him for cornerback for 2019 and 2020 I believe um, but uh, or it might have been 2019 and 2021 either way there was a two-year sample for this he did post an elite quarterback rating when he was targeted of 42.7. Now, that was in 2019. Again, this was splitting a role, but I imagine if he was able to tap into that, not just once, but the other time that he played cornerback, I think he had a rating of uh, 79 or something like that. So either way, you're talking about very good to elite play. And I'm not expecting him to, to be converted to be a cornerback or anything like that, but it always helps to know that a guy has the ability to tap into elite coverage traits and or ability and or performances uh, and, and hopefully you can find a way to extract that more often, right? After finishing Miami, he became a graduate transfer to Duke, but you look at his entire six-year sample size, over 60 games of experience. This is one of the things that uh, you can't always get the physical freaks or guys that are anomalies, right? You have to have these these players that have developed by playing the game, right? Ultimately, that's how everybody's going to get better. Some people are more naturally gifted and, and can kind of skate their way by a little bit. Uh, but then you have these guys like Al Blades who, uh, you know, they've gotten it out the mud. They, they've been in the stones. Uh, they, they, you know, they're out there on the field day in and day out getting work in. There are some concerns from a health perspective with him. 2020. He had some cardiac concerns that had him, uh, I believe it was either not finish the season and or miss a following season, but he was diagnosed with myocarditis um, in 2020, which I believe was like an inflammation of the heart um, after getting an MRI done on it. So that's something you have to kind of be concerned about it, especially given uh, how that stuff hits home with us when you want to talk about, you know, blood clot type situations uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, Max Mitchell, for example, and all of the other freak injuries that we've had that we've seen kind of end their style careers early, not just for the Jets, but at large. Looking at what he's been able to accomplish, though, he uses his arm length really well. That's one of the first things you'll notice about him. Long arms. He knows how to use them to tighten and squeeze those throwing windows. He has solid footwork that, generally speaking, allows him to stay in pace with what's going on in a play, generally in good position, stuff like that. A run game punisher, if he sees it, he doesn't hesitate. 
and he's flowing to the ball, it's a problem. For whoever the ball carrier is, you know, hopefully you just hit the ground <laughs> or, or you find a way to get out of bounds because he's coming with bad intentions. Seems to have pretty solid route recognition, as you'd expect from a guy that has over 60 games of experience. And then he understands when to play the receiver's hands to break up a pass. It's a very underrated skill set and something that it generally seems like you either naturally understand, know how to do, and actually get it done. Uh, and then for those that don't, Al Blades knows what he's doing in that regard. On the you know, flip side to this coin, he doesn't have the best long speed, so he can get burned. There's a lot of hip flexibility concerns that I have with a guy like Al Blades because there's plenty of examples on his tape where he just can't flip his hips. He can't turn. He can't go from, you know, running sideline, uh, running towards a sideline to having to flip his hips and go the other way, uh, even to just make up 5, 10, 15 yards. Um, and so I, I imagine this isn't a guy you want roaming the field, right? Box safety is what you're going to see con uh, consistently out of a guy like this when you look at him on tape. Limit the amount of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, torsion that he's going to have to do with his hips and different things like that by uh, keeping him near the line of scrimmage, keeping things in front of him, uh, and allowing him to just flow towards making a lot of those plays and run defense. A better zone player than he is in man coverage. Uh, there's a lot of things that come up with his coverage technique when he's playing, uh, uh, you know, mano y mano. He's over aggressive for one. Uh, this is going to lead to a ton of flags. Very grabby, very hands on. Uh, wants to be physical with a guy, but doesn't necessarily know how to properly get it done with his technique. Questions what uh, he's going to see in run defense. So even though he's a force coming downhill, right, when he recognizes the run and he's targeting you. He doesn't always trust what he's seeing, right? It's kind of that Zach Wilson-like effect where you know the guy is open, you see him open, or you even see the window about to open, and yet for whatever reason, he doesn't just go full speed and, you know, let it rip. So that's something you can coach out of a guy like Al Blades, trusting him because the, the odd part is he's generally in good position. His eyes are generally having good discipline. He just doesn't unleash like he's supposed to. Um, doesn't consistently jam or land his punches in man coverage either. So you see a lot more free releases off the line or releases due to bad technique by him where he, he's tried to jam a guy late. He's tried to, you know, just, just hit a guy with a one arm, uh, uh, a one hand stiff arm. Um, and hopefully that stalled him out to get him in better position. Things like that don't naturally seem to come to Al Blades. And he generally looks uncomfortable in zone and off-man coverage. It's almost like he understands he's uh, an easy target for anybody that has any kind of real shiftiness to him. And, um, you know, he, he tries to overcompensate for that. So the ceiling for him may not be necessarily high, even though I love the bloodlines. I, I you know, love everything I've seen from him uh, for the most part while he was with Miami uh, before some of those health concerns and stuff came into play, he seems like he's capped. Now, uh, you know, this may be a guy that takes longer to develop uh, or, or, you know, anything to that nature. But to be honest, he could just ultimately end up being a, a camp body, somebody who, you know, lives and dies on scout teams across the NFL. Not to say that I'm low on this guy or anything like that, but... There's nothing in particular, and this might be the first undrafted free agent I can say this about from this year's class anyways we're breaking down. I don't know if he'll be uh, you know, in the NFL in three years. So just my thoughts. Let me know ultimately what you guys think, and I'll catch you again. Peace.